Community Sports Network as we wrap up the 2019 at Heartland Region Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship game played and completed just moments ago here at Collier Arena in Hanover, Indiana. A memorable game, a hard-fought game, and a closely wound one in which the number one seed Hanover emerges with the victory against Transylvania, the number two seed by the final score of 76 to 73. It was a game to remember. With us to this afternoon is head coach of the Pioneers in his 18th year at the helm. Head coach Brian Lane will begin the press conference with an opening statement from Coach Lane. Well, I think it was, a, it was just an awesome game, and a, and a game that uh, would, when these two teams have, have played over the years, they it, it always ends up being some terrific games. And I think the, the su success of both programs uh, has shown that um, when these two when these two get get in a game like this, that it, uh, it's quite a battle. I mean, I was extremely proud of how how our guys. Um, you know, we got off to a really good start, got up. Um, uh, as many as seven in the first half, um, limited with foul trouble, and, and ended up after we when we subbed, we ended up um, losing that lead and, and getting uh, actually going going down. I thought the momentum really had shifted during that during that stretch when we had three guys with with the two fouls, and um, but the guys came came in off the bench and the momentum that really felt like it had shifted, but we were only down two or three points at, uh, at the break. So uh, we felt like all the way through, throughout the game, we, uh, we were right there. Um, and then they got, got a, a really good stretch there where they, they pushed it out to nine. And, and as the guys uh, have done all year, they, they did not quit. They, they were tough and, and got it all the way back to a, to a tie score. So. I was really proud of, of our effort. The, you know, all we ask of them is is to play hard and play play the, the, the very best that they can. And and I think I think we we got that tonight. I want to ask um, Schmidt, who is one of the uh, freshmen at shooting, he's one of the starters. Um, he got two fouls and was fouled out all of a sudden. What exactly happened in that situation? Because Everyone that was watching was kind of confused exactly what did the officials tell you. Right, he had he had three fouls, and uh, the the player caught it in front of um, Hanover's bench, and and he drove baseline. Uh, they called him, I guess, for for a hand check, and then um, the the official told me that that Bo said, "That's awful." And and then the senior goes to the bench with five fouls, so. I mean, it's disappointing. I mean, I, that I, I I was expecting it to be worse, but but those those were the words. But but also we have to, have, and we preach it all the time. You you can't put it, you can't put somebody in a position to to do that. I mean, you just you just can't. I mean, you just gotta. Um, we we've really worked hard on trying to respond and not react. You know, he reacted by. By saying that that was awful, and and so you know he he really got off to a good start at the beginning of the game. I thought he, he was he was on on course to to have a really good solid game. Got it, picked up his second foul, and then uh, so we had to sit him. So eleven minutes as a as a senior, that that's one of those he'll remember. I mean, that, that's a tough way to lose, tough way to to not be able to play anymore. On the other end of the coin, what would you say about? Uh... His replacement and the rest of the team in the following minutes about their resilience and their ability and what could have been a watershed moment for Hanover, but it seemed like in the final ten minutes it became a very tight game. I think about our, their ability to yeah. respond. I think our guys took that one personal. I mean, you could you could really, uh, you know, sometimes coaches get technicals to to try to change the flow of the game. You know, I I didn't have to because I could see that that was something that that they were not happy about and. Uh, and it elevated us. I don't remember what the score was at the time, but um, I think we, that really started our run to to get it back. It, we gave gave us some energy, and uh, they've they've got a ton of respect for Bo, ton of respect for Cooper, uh, both both seniors that that have played one state championships in in Kentucky and have played in big games. So this was one of those that um, once Bo went out, I think I think our guys took it personal and and did a terrific job of getting back back even. With that being said, what with that being said, what a terrific job 
John Miller's done, but with Hanover, I mean, you know, we, we feel like we were playing good defense and, and they shot 51%, 42% from from three. It's the third game in a row that, that we've outscored them from the field, but it, it, it was just tough. It's tough. Um, we, you know, we were preaching, we're keep them off the foul line, keep them off the foul line, because they've shot 30, over 30 free throws each of the three games. So it's obviously something that, that we got to do a better job of is keeping them off. And it was it was so early that it just put us in a bind. And um, and but but Hanover was attacking, and and when they're attacking the, that, you're going to foul. That actually segues into my question because they played so well in the first half and so early in the fourth quarter. Why right. Put the foul on mounting up so quickly. Is there in the back of your mind a worry that this this is going to come back and bite us? Well, we t we talked at halftime about trying to not put them in the bonus so quickly. Um, you know, the the flow of the game. I noticed. I mean, we we fouled a couple of times, eighty feet from the basket, and and clear fouls. You know, you walk to the other end, you, you shoot shoot free throws. So um, that we, uh, we we were trying. We we're trying to do some some things to where where Cam, where where some other guys have to do it besides Cam, and then I mean he just it just seemed like at one point he just took took the game over. I mean the three that he made, um, falling away late late in the shot clock, over a contested was as big time a, a three as you'll see, and I believe the score was tied. You know he he misses that we get the rebound and and now we're going down and, and have an opportunity to to do it, but. You know, you're with him. You're having to change defenses. You're having to change how you go do ball screens, and um, he's so so good in in uh, in transition. Um, and there's a reason the dude's an All-American. <laughs> I mean, and and it takes more than one guy to guard him. And and for the most part, um, or he had six at the first, had six in the first half, um, and then you know had had thirty in the thirty in the game off of. Um, 18 free throw attempts. Um, Lucas Gentry, he's shown glimpses of his brilliance this season. He's had pockets of really good performances and then other games where he hasn't been as impactful, but it seems like uh, his entire body of work this, this postseason, he has come on like gangbusters. What do you think has unlocked Lucas Gentry over this weekend, seemingly when your team needs it the most? Yeah, I think one of the things that that really helped him. And any time somebody gets hurt or injury, opportunity presents itself for somebody. And um, you know, when when Luke Schroeder went out with with Mono and, and missed the three weeks of the season right at the tail end, um, we were asking guys to to step up and, and give us give us more. Um, and and he's one of those guys that was able to do that. I mean, he he got a knack of being able to score inside. Um, you know, he was eight fourteen from the foul from the from the field and, and perfect from the foul line. And um, you know, we were he was playing through contact and and I, I we were really just trying making sure that he he kept doing that and um but he he can score inside, he can score off the, the flares and, and things like that. So um he has gotten better, you know, early in the season. We we thought he may have to, to, to pull out for the season and um and have another another um Another issue with with uh, with his hip, like he did in high school, but he came out of that and then and then was able to really handle um, the physicality of, of what needed to take place. You have a you lose two great uh, few great seniors, but you have a pretty good core coming back. It's got to make you optimistic about what the future holds for the program. Yeah, I mean, it, I I just told them um, I told them in there that we had put together a schedule this year that when we when we started our in January, our conference schedule, um, our our non-conference schedule was ranked number two in the country, and and I we put that together with the sole purpose of getting ready for a game like this and, and the games that are going to happen next week. Um, you know, we started off um, one and three. Gabe Schmidt had a concussion early, so we missed a couple of those games against some really really tough teams, and there will be uh, you know of those teams. Um, with the first regional ranking, we were one and five against those teams, and felt like we, if we'd been three and three, all of a sudden we're sitting there to, at large. Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to set up our schedule to where, if I have a team like I do now, that, that where I feel like we're really good enough to to be an at large team, I don't want the strength of schedule to keep us out of it at the end. 
and uh, so certainly the strength of schedule didn't keep us out. It was one of those situations where you, you got to go on the road and, and win some of those games, and, and we didn't get those games. Anything else? Once again, head coach Brian Lane of the Transylvania Pioneers on a great season in which the Pioneers finished by second place in each season, regular season as well as the tournament championship game. Pioneers appearing in their first tournament championship game in the last seven years, seemingly a team on the rise and a season certainly to remember. Coach Brian Lane, thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you very much.